My name is Brandon Murphy. I am the current vice president at Onway Fish and Game and Gun Club. Um, I'm relatively new to the shooting sports, uh, having grown up in Eastern Canada and major centers, uh, Montreal, Toronto, and then a little sojourn down to Michigan and Detroit. Um, I've seen the other side of the argument, um, and I've seen what the illegal guns can represent. So I fully support the concept of get the illegal guns off the streets, make the public safer. Uh, what I don't support is when you take heavily vetted, fully criminally checked uh, sport shooters and take away our rights to pursue something that we enjoy. Um, I've only been in sport shooting now for five or six years. Um, I love my handguns. Um, not much of a rifle guy, so the AR ban doesn't personally affect me. Um, but uh, like I heard earlier, I'm heavily into the historical piece. Um, you know, I love the uh, I love the history and the science that went behind building some of these weapons. I'm very proud of the fact that I own several of the uh, older ones now. Um, but when the government starts telling me that, even though I am criminally checked daily, mm -hmm. um, and the police can show up at my door and make sure that I'm storing everything properly at will, uh, that I can't own certain firearms, including some of the historical pieces I would love to have in my collection. Yeah. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the part that I find probably the most vulgar, and, and that may not even be strong enough a word for it, is the timing of this. Yeah. Um, taking advantage of a horrific tragedy in Nova Scotia where someone who's obviously had some mental challenges, um, acquired illegal firearms, um, and utilized them to, uh, to devastate so many people. Um, and now he's going after a weapon that legally wasn't involved. Yeah. Uh, you know, banning every branded firearm that was involved in a mass tragedy anywhere across the world uh, really demonstrates how the federal government doesn't understand the gun regulations we currently have and doesn't understand how to fix the problem. They're, they're buying some votes here and they're using our, our money to buy those votes. Yeah and in the process are taking away something that we truly enjoy doing and are no more a hazard than any driver on the road. Yeah. And again, you know, it comes back to that, that understanding. And, and if you look at some of the recent events, and not to diminish what took place in those not at all by any means, um, but the fact that that gentleman was running around in a RCMP marked up vehicle wearing the uniform of an RCMP officer. Which is completely legal, apparently. <laughs> apparently, but you would have thought some things, and he was not allowed to have any firearm. So the, the vetting process worked in that regard that he wasn't supposed to have them. So now where did all the checks and balances take place from there? And again, not to diminish what took place, nope. but from my understanding, nine of the folks that died were because of fire. Correct. Literally. So he used matches and gasoline to yeah. do his work. Is that next? Well, <laughs> therein lies the, the question. So again, my, my leading statement into that was when you start to prey on people's fears and you justify it by their safety, a lot of folks will go down a path, you know, the, the road to hell is always paved by good intentions. And again, it's it's mixing those two messages up. You know, the gentleman to your right actually served with us. He didn't mm -hmm. use military grade uh, firearms for the intended purpose. And then that's the uh, item that they show right on top of the, the page was was that. So I appreciate your uh, your insight.